Welcome to the car guys and this week an epic titanic battle between the Renault Clio Williams 2 and the GR Yaris. This is basically David meets Goliath. Forget Ferrari versus Ferrari. Forget Ferrari versus Ford. This is where it's at. The battle royale. And this week we're here to answer the big question. Exactly how far have hot hatches come since the 1995 Clio to the 2021 GR Yaris? So here we are, Jason. This is the one that a lot of the fans of the car guys have been asking for. They've all wanted my pristine 7,000 mile Renault Clio no. Williams 2 out of the garage and on the road. And we thought it was the perfect excuse to bring your GR Yaris and to jump in and out of them and really try and understand how much the game has moved on in terms of hot hatches. Yeah, massive evolution. This was the, not the very first of the hot hatches, but kind of the benchmark for hot hatches. And this Yaris is in the same vein. It's a real scamp of a car. It wants to go, great handling. Let's see what they're like compared to each other. I have a sneaky suspicion that they're gonna be more similar than we think. I think you may be right. And maybe more similar than you think. Yes. So Jason, let's talk about size. Awkward. As you can see, the Clio Williams 2 is quite tiny. Very tiny. Compared to the monstrously massive GR Yaris. It is striking when you've got them parked next to each other. The length of the vehicles uh, is not too dissimilar. The height of this bonnet is, <laughs> is frankly, it's ridiculous. And this isn't a particularly tall car, but the roof line is at least another six inches taller than the Renault. Yeah, so roof right. line about up to my shoulders yeah. on here. And yeah. significantly lower Significantly here. lower. I mean, I think the bonnet is obviously as a result of all that pedestrian safety thingy where you get hit and you fall down into a pillow oh. of lovely soft Ooh. material. So that's, you can really see that's quite evident compared to the obviously who gives a of the <laughs> Renault Clio. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're hitting a pedestrian in this, they're literally headbutting the top of the engine instantaneously. Wheels, let's talk about wheels. Yeah. They are enormous. <laughs> that looks like it's running tractor wheels compared to the Renault. I mean, these are 18s. This is not a big wheel in today's standards. No, it is not. And yet, compared to the, quite frankly, what are they, 10s? 15s. <laughs> 15s. But they're 15s with big tyres on them. This is obviously an 18 with slightly skinnier tyres. They just look, they just, it's incredible the difference in size. So a couple of things that these cars do have in common. If you remember back in the day, Renault made a very big thing about the fact that the front wings on the Clio were made of plastic because a lot of the accidents that you have are 10 miles an hour or less. So we can see these flex really quite nicely. Now, the GI Yaris employs this in a slightly different way. This is pure weight saving. Literally every panel on the GI Harris flexes in some way, shape or form. So not revolutionary like the Clio, more we have to find weight somewhere. So uh, side profile, what can we talk about? Both cars are two doors. Obviously the door on the Yaris is uh, frankly enormous and almost the entire length of the Clio. Interestingly, despite the fact that they are similar lengths, the back of the Clio has got room for easily two full-size adults, whereas the back of the Yaris has the room for two full-size iguanas. So now let's talk about roof lines. The Yaris looks quite aggressive, right? So you've got this big raking roof line with a big spoiler across the back, but actually this body size is taller than the Clio, and yet the Clio has a lovely big window which you can see out of, whereas in this car, you can't see nothing out the rear window. Right, should we talk engines? Why not? Because this may be one, the only place that you're going to come out and top trumps. So in the Yaris, we have one of the most sophisticated 1.6 three-cylinder turbocharged engines, the most powerful three-cylinder engine ever produced. What do you got? I have a mighty two-litre 16-valve wow. four-cylinder, naturally aspirated. A much bigger lump. 
A bigger lump, a bit of motorsport pedigree in there, quite revvy, obviously no turbo lag, torque evenly distributed. This one puts out about 150 brake horsepower. Oh, excellent. Uh, 150 brake horsepower is exactly what this puts out to start it. <laughs> And the Aris is a 1.6, not, as I told my insurance company, a 1.3. Oh, awkward. <laughs> Boot space in the rear of the Clio. Open up the hatch. Note the beautiful carbon fibre strip. Very delicious. Open the wafer-thin uh, rear parcel shelf with its handy little pocket in the back. And it's a decent size, actually. It's not too bad. It's a little bit shallow, but you can fit some stuff in there. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Open the boot on the Yaris, quick flick of the switch. Um, it's actually bigger than you think, isn't it? It is bigger than you think, although it has this high shelf in it to contain everything and a very, very flimsy parcel shelf. Okay, so here we are sat in the GR Yaris. It's obviously a completely different interior. There are a lot more sound deadening, a lot more bits of plastic. It's quite an imposing interior to sit in. All of this stuff, you've got a very small slit in the windscreen. You can barely see anything out the rear windows. This is in complete contrast to the Clio, which has got a lovely glass house in it where you can see everything around you and perfectly place the vehicle at any point that you want to. And here I am in that large glass house known as the Renault Clio Williams II. As you can see, a very different kettle of fish. We've got lots of windscreen, lots of side window, great visibility out the back. We've got an open cockpit, lots of room, gear stick in a similar place, beautiful blue dials, incredibly horrendous plasticky switch gear from the 90s, which actually I love, enormous, comfy, French armchairs. The whole thing is very, very different. It's a different approach to hot hatches. GI Yaris is all about aggression. This is all about the wafting. So Jason, you have now jumped into the Clio Williams. You've just been driving the GI Yaris for over two hours. So you're now perfectly positioned to say exactly what the differences are between the two cars in terms of driving. So first thing you notice is that these seats are very, very comfortable. <laughs> you sit right down in them. This is classic hot hatch driving position where your knees are up near the top of the steering wheel. You're kind of in a very high, almost like driving a van. The gear change is sweet as a nut on this car. <laughs> it is so lovely. Uh, steering is super light, very responsive. But you could definitely feel that um, understeer is a thing. Yes. When I started driving this car again, I actually found the gear changes or the, or the sensation of the gear change quite similar to the Yaris. Mm. Not quite as notchy, but it feels very similar in terms of a size. And going through the gears, I found quite similar as well. The hand from steering wheel to gear shift is very similar mm. in that respect. And the throw. The Yaris is a little bit smaller box on it, a little smaller gate, but actually, but this is so lovely. The Yaris tents can be a bit notchy. What do you love the most about it? What I love about it is it is its size. It's so small and chuckable. If you need to do something, you just jump in, you don't think about it, and you're off. You can pitch it into a corner really, really hard. Obviously, front wheel drive, so you can just properly fly into a bend, cock the back wheel if you're being a bit energetic, but it's just got a lot of character. There's a lot of French flair with this car. I mean, I was immediately seduced by the blue dials and the big DFS sofas and just how easy it is to see everything. It's a nice small car, lots of visibility and a really willing little, you know, fun engine. And I'll tell you another striking difference is the ride quality. This is a so much more crashy than the GR Yaris. GR Yaris is like riding a Rolls Royce Silver Ghost compared to this thing. This feels like it hasn't actually got any suspension. Yeah, it's I know. Just two blocks of wood. I needed to check to make sure we didn't have four flat tires. <laughs> it's so plasticky and so cheap feeling in here that I almost kind of like it. Is I've, I've gone I've gone past the point of thinking this is horrendous to this has got loads of 90s charm. Yeah, it, it's plastic fantastic. You've got the uh, radio hidden under a little flap. Oh, I mean, that's, that's always nice. I'm 
Lovely. All the controls have got this big sort of Tonka toy feel about them. They're all, it's all designed as if you were supposed to be wearing gloves when you, when you actually use it. It's so amazing that this has managed to have been tucked away for so many years without being absolutely caked to an inch of its life. And I have to say, because we've had COVID, I've not driven it anywhere near as much as I expected it to. I thought we were going to have it way over 10,000 miles by now. And unfortunately, it's just not. It's not been one that I've taken out very often. So one of the other things that uh, is very similar to the Yaris, uh, turning circle is diabolical. Is it really? I've not really noticed oh, that. Awful. I mean, you'd think that this thing would turn on a half penny, wouldn't you? Look, turning circle, look. Oh yeah, that is terrible, isn't it? I'm pretty sure we've got a Ferrari round that. That is terrible, yeah. I'm pretty sure the 355 does it better than that. Yeah. And that's a horrendous turning circle. <laughs> How do you find the pull of the engine then? So compared to the Yaris, obviously there's a lot more torque, a lot more actual speed with the Yaris. Well, what about the power delivery? Yeah, I do you know what, it's it's not a particularly torquey engine. So you, you look at the speedo and you think, oh, actually I'm going a lot faster than, than it feels like I'm going. But the thing with the Yaris is you get that big gob full of torque, which pushes you back into the sea. And you're like, oh, geez, we must be going really quickly. This doesn't do that. I think the Yaris is more of a point and squirt car. Yep. This is more a flow. More of a flow. It's sort of maintaining pace continuously all the way through, you know, all the way down the B road. Whereas the Yaris, you can you could almost bring it to a stop on a corner if you wanted to, and then bang, you're off again. It's almost more fun to do that. Whereas with this, to have to work your way through the gears to get back up to speed is actually a bit of a chore. A bit of a chore. This likes to hold the speed through the corners and go round those corners exceptionally well. You don't find yourself braking as much in this, and I don't necessarily think it's just because you're going substantially slower. I think if the car allows you to kind of play, the chassis allows you to kind of play with the speed in and out of the corner. Yeah. You can't, you don't really get that feeling with the Yaris. You know, it could be time for some, uh, some beanage. Really? In the clear Williams 2? Here, with my reputation, <laughs> the 13th Duke of Wimbledon, in a nunnery. At 3am, bit of beanage, okay, so Second nice gear. low gear. Here we go, foot flat to the floor, see the power build. Yeah, it's a decent, good, roary noise, which of course in the GR Yaris is is sort of piped into the cabin, whereas this yeah. is the actual, real noise. Actual noise. That felt pretty quick to me. And that was 60, so, you know, it's not slow. You do have to get it up around the top of the rev range to really feel it kick in. Yeah, you do. If you have a GR Yaris and a Clio Williams, do you really need both? Are they basically doing the same job? Um, yeah. They sort of are, aren't they? They sort of are. Mm. You probably don't need both of them. As much as this 90s nostalgia is wonderful. And it is wonderful. It makes you want to put on a global hyper colour t-shirt and watch the Teenage Mutant Teen and watch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> These bleeds? These bleeds. <laughs> I would take those rosary bleeds and uh, stuff them up your nose. These bleeds? <laughs> those bleeds, yeah. Do you really need a Renault Clio Williams? I mean, right now it kind of feels like I do, but I mean, ha realistically, how much am I going to drive it when I've got the Yaris? And the Yaris is so good and so competent in the modern world. It's got all the tech. Of course, we haven't really mentioned tech. This thing has very little tech. We've got um, heated uh, rear screen and... Um, uh, yeah, that's... that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, 
cigarette lighter yeah. and, a, and a radio. Oh, and it's got a radio. Wing mirrors. Has it? Yeah, it's got Good electric Lord. wing mirrors and uh, electric yeah. windows. And, so. and a hazard warning light button. Yeah. So that's good. But apart from that, really nothing. Whereas the Yaris obviously has uh, all of that and uh, every single type of piece of modern technology, the car plays, the lane assist nonsense, the stop start nonsense, all of the other toys and tech and things that yeah. make your life pleasurable in a car. So even though I don't use half of that tech, it is nice to know that it is there. And the reason why I think also additionally it's good to talk about these two cars together, because they're not obvious bedfellows apart from being both hot hatches, yeah. but you can pretty much now have them for the same money. Same sort of money. <laughs> so that's the thing. I mean, the Clio Williams family has appreciated significantly and they are now knocking on the door of a GR Yaris. So it is a legitimate, mm, which hot hatch do you go for? Classic 90s nostalgia, analogue, uh, incredibly no frills, fun motoring. Or do you go for the current hot hatch champion with everything being dialed up to 11 and everything frankly being brilliant and unburstable. You'd have to be a collector to want one of these against the Yaris. I mean, don't, I'm having an, an amazing time driving this car, it's wonderful. But I'm now, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I've got a two and a half hour schlep home. Yeah. What, what do you think I'm really gonna, what am I gonna wanna? Yeah, whereas I, of course, am, I'm gonna now drive this car a lot. Yeah. So it's gonna be interesting. What's it like in this corner? This is a good corner. Oh my good God. Yeah, we almost died then, almost died. This is the bit where I go, well, why the hell did I let Jason drive the car? <laughs> this is this, but this I'll moment be, is happening here. now. Yeah, right now, right now. That bit where he enters a corner, just a little bit too fast. <laughs> and you think, hmm, is my collision damage waiver insurance fully up to date? So, in conclusion then, how much has the game been moved on with the GI Yaris over the Clio Williams 2? Substantially. Yes. I mean, I think obviously technology, safety, usability has come on leaps and bounds, oh, yeah. but we are driving a modern car, which is much worse to see out of than the 90s car. How did that happen? How did they decide in the, in the hot hatch development to go, hmm, let's make everything really difficult to see out of and this then double the speed. Yeah, yeah, let's double, double the speed, double the speed yeah. and make it four times more difficult to see out of. How, how did that happen? Did I miss a meeting? So they bring up the door height. Yep. So that your shoulders are below the door to, to help you not die. They make the front really tall to help pedestrians, pedestrians being hit. Die. They put overall, everything is sort of bulbous to make it more safe. And then strangely, they give it loads more power and less visibility so you're more likely to have an accident so it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah here you go you're definitely going to crash in this <laughs> it, but don't worry because it's really safe yeah yeah it's fine even for pedestrians hit as many as you like as many as you want not literally. a problem thanks for watching this episode on the gr yaris versus the renault clio williams 2. really hope you've enjoyed it and if you have don't forget to subscribe, ding the notification bell for when we have another film uploaded. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and our website. And don't forget the merch. Never. There'll be another Car Guys episode along next week. <laughs>